What's up, my man, Bashi Rose? Welcome to this edition of I Mix What I Like here at The Real News. Well, thank you, brother. Pleasure to be here. So as we know, you, you not only do most of the editing for this particular segment, you do a lot of videography for The Real News Network, but you also have, independent of that and prior to that, this fascinating career as an independent artist, videographer, playwright, actor. First, let's start off with this organization you co-founded, uh, the Nomo Theater. Let's talk about that a little bit and uh, its, its history and what is it designed to do? Okay. Yeah, Nomo, now it's Nomo Theater Film. Initially it was just Nomo Theater. It started in like about 1994. And what happened was in the early 90s I was in a, uh, in a local Baltimore poetry scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran across this brother named Mitchell Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And even though I was in a poetry scene, my, I, was all, I always felt like I was destined for theater. That's what I really wanted to do. But um, you know, the open, mic, the open mic scene was, was really accessible, giving the opportunity to meet people and to just practice your writing skills, you know what I'm saying, in front of an audience and give good uh, critiques, good critiques. So I met this brother named Mitchell, and at the time I was reading about the Black Arts Movement, uh, Ed Bullins, Mayor Baraka, Sonia Sanchez. So I sat down and started talking to him. We were talking about different plays, Wally Sayenka, playwrights, Wally Sayenka mm -hmm. and others. And then he mentioned, uh, I mentioned Ed Bullins. And he said, uh, I actually took a workshop at the Shakespeare, New York Shakespeare Festival with wow. um, Ed Bullins, a monologue writing class. So we just ended up talking for hours. So we just decided to start our own theater collective called our Nomo Theater. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the term Nomo. Um, it's loosely uh, defined as the word, mm -hmm. but during the black arts movement, um, some, a lot of our theory um, that was attempting to define this new kind of art that was being developed, Nomo was a term that was used. So one author um, and thinker from that time, Paul Carter Harrison, actually edited an anthology. We had, a, he had a, an extensive uh, introduction called Nomo. We defined what Nomo, uh, Nomo was. Mm -hmm. And some of it, you know, applies to call and response in African American art, um, uh, resistance, our spirituality, our African spirituality. Uh, resistance to white supremacy, all these things combined. And make, it's a West African Akan term, so that it just so people are clear, yeah. right? Akan, yeah. and it's also uh, associated with the Dogon right, of Mali right. as well. Right. So, um, the Dogon, by the way, another deep topic, I just want to put out there real right. quick. We know are, they themselves call themselves the true uh, uh, descendants of the, the, the original Egyptians, or the right. people of Kemet, Kemet right. and carry on a lot of those traditions even to this day, exactly. seeing things astrologically that hadn't even been seen. Serious star systems. Serious, all of that, but right. hadn't even been seen by you know, modern technology exactly. until much, much later. Exactly. Uh, they, so they, yeah, they, anyways, I just wanted to put that in there real quick, that these yeah. are some deep people that you're connecting, and deep traditions that you're connecting yourself right. to. But anyway, please continue, yeah. Yeah, so basically we started out just taking um, poems that we have both written collectively. And um, I would read, um, and since he had more hands-on experience in theater, I would read theory about theater, different styles of theater, acting, what, what have you. And he would actually like train me. So we started out taking poems that I had written, and I started ex extending the poems to short plays. Mm. So eventually we had a whole play consisting of poetry um, and short skits, if you will. And um, the first piece that we uh, did produce was called Locks and Links. And we mm. produced it at uh, the Arena Playhouse in Baltimore. And that's like the oldest running black community theater in the country. And, um, and then from there, we just started, um, started getting gigs in high schools, middle schools. Uh, we did a lot of work in low, uh, recreation centers. So the way I learned my craft was always hands-on and um, in, in a practical, functional sense. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't uh, art for art's sake. You know what I'm saying? It, it was art in the context of community. And um, taking that history, uh, Mitchell, who was influenced by the, you know, he was, he's consciously influenced by our most resistance and, and, and revolutionary um, activists and artists. So that, that's what influenced us, and that's how we practice our work. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the black arts movement, and mm -hmm. you mentioned even specifically Mary Baraka again, you know, that call he once fam famously put out about, you know, wanting, uh, 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 you know, not just art for art's sake, as you said, but, mm -hmm. but art that would fight, art that would inspire uh, uh, aggressive militant action in response to the conditions facing African descended people in this country and other parts of the world. Um, so I'm curious, how, how have you been, I'm interested in this relationship you have with, with the community here in Baltimore, particularly the youth, 
I know that they are the subject and participants in a lot of the video that you, you work with and the mm -hmm. stories that they have to, to, to tell are, are integral to the work that you do in, in terms of your, your cinematic work. Mm -hmm. um, but initially, I'm, I'm particularly interested in this question about how do they receive the theatrical piece? Because you know we don't often hear a lot about theater uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, black youth in, 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 in today's world. We don't hear a lot about theater. And I know there's a thriving scene nationally and of course internationally. Mm -hmm. But when you approach them with theater and, 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 and cinematic uh, uh, performance of, of art and poetry, how, how have young people responded? They re responded well. Um, theater allows, allows them to open up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to be themselves. And at the same time, theater also, you know what I'm saying, because it's, you, know, you have to read, obviously, right. you know what I'm saying, um, it's, and you have to work collectively and you have to perform. So it gives the, the students an opportunity to learn without learning, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for example, um, there's a program that I work with called Dancing Money Drums, a partner with uh, Sharanda Christmas, where we have students travel throughout the African diaspora. Uh, they've been to places like Jamaica, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, what have you. And they, they, they focus on the history of those countries, but they also focus on the presence of Africans in those different uh, places and the history of resistance. And they choose whatever artistic discipline they want to express their experience in the country and their history mm -hmm. of the country. It culminates in a performance of them um, um, presenting um, a theatrical performance where all these experiences are included. So theater allows them to have like this like broad scope on what they're learning and to actually physically practice it and to feel it. You know, so a lot of times in the Black Arts Movement, they did these plays called, that were called rituals. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with movement. Um, a colleague of mine, Rosalind Carthen, recently just produced uh, Slave Ship by Amir Baraka. And most of that play is actually movement and sound. Mm. So I think that's an excellent way, you know what I'm saying, for us to learn. That's how our ancestors have learned for centuries. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I mean, you talk about even the traditions of the griot, or mm. as one of my former professors, uh, Dr. Ayeli Bikari, said, you know, we should use the word hala. You know, because he, he thought that the French were being disparaging by putting the term griot, meaning just wandering poet, on these these deep and powerful African traditions. So mm -hmm. you're saying the hala is a, is a, a better way of, of approaching that, that, that uh, um, not only the term, but the, the definition of what the people were doing and, mm -hmm. and carrying on the traditions and the stories and the, the rituals of their communities. Mm -hmm. uh, but you talk about this tradition and the importance of it. Um, I'm struck immediately, you know, in terms of this theater piece by... Uh, the, the negative comparison I would, all, I would have to what Tyler Perry has blown up with. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, what people don't always realize is that Medea and all that nonsense started on theater, on stage, right. and then was brought to the big screen. And those who are aware of the theatrical piece are not always aware that there are other forms of black theater, that there are other more deep and more powerful, and, per my interest, uh, radical forms of art and traditions that don't get automatically swooped up by Hollywood and brought onto the big screen mm -hmm. uh, for, I think, somewhat obvious, you know, political reasons. Right. Um, so I'm interested in that, that tradition of, of how you see your function as a griot mm -hmm. and how you see, you know, yourself functioning in the 21st century in reviving and maintaining certain traditions and, and um, perspectives and art and performance and uh, history. Um, could you say a few words about that? This, 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 and, and, and what maybe you are finding yourself competing against? And I'm, you know, um, again, using Tyler Perry's a straw argument here. Right. But you know, you are operating in a media environment that's hostile to a lot of the work that you're trying to do. Right. So I'm just asking you how you see yourself functioning as this 21st century griot or hala. Right. Um, well, in the most practical sense, I see myself functioning hands-on mm -hmm. with that community. Um, whose attention I'm competing with, with, with the major media. Um, it's not enough to just have abstract theories or what have you on how our people, our, our youth are affected by the media or blah, blah, blah. We have to work with them in a hands-on fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, that's my main approach. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So not only, um, so yes, a lot of the students I work with, their first experience may have been uh, Medea, Tyler Perry, that's how I relate to it. You know what I'm saying? But by them working with me consistently, establishing like a family environment, um, they're just organically exposed to what I'm influenced by. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And because they have that connection with me, they naturally are drawn towards what I'm, what I'm drawn towards, the Black Arts Movement. So that's why we're able to have like 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds doing excerpts from The Dutchman by right, Mary Baraka. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and understanding it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's deep. Uh, um, one of the things that, 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 that I, uh, you know, I've only slowly been catching up to your work. 
and some of the pieces you shared with me in preparation for today's interview, you know, are, are I think, amazing. Uh, and I want to come back to the Nina Simone piece in a minute. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to start with the one where you were using, you had, you had young people sharing their poetry and some of their stories about growing up here in Baltimore. Uh -huh. And you had done some what I thought were amazing things with the color in the in the in the in the shoot in the video in the editing. I mean the way you went from black and white to pulling out some some, and I don't even it looked even like at one point you were you were I don't know I don't know what the ter terminology would be but sort of hyper superimposing new color onto right. the 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 people in the in the, I mean I thought it was so aesthetically it was just brilliant and beautiful Thanks. but but I thought it was also powerful in 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 the way you brought in. Uh, you had some Coltrane playing. You had people reading poetry and telling their stories. Um, talk a little bit about that work, if you would. And and uh, um, and in another piece, you had you know a family dealing with the issues of police brutality, mm -hmm. and there's and just even the drama that c is created in the family over a, a son saying, "I just want to go to the store mm -hmm. at night to get a quick snack," and the parents being worried about the police violence that he might suffer just in that small act. Mm -hmm. um, and being misidentified as a dope. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of stuff. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about some of this work uh, okay. uh, uh, that you've done and that you look to be doing more in the future. Yeah, that piece you're referring to, that's called uh, You Thought I Was Him. Right. Um, so, I worked as the uh, cinematographer uh, and editor on that piece. Mm -hmm. And I collaborated with some other artists. Uh, local theater here sent a stage um, to commemorate uh, the birthday of uh, Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. um, decided to gather local artists from Baltimore, different genres. And have them come together and create pieces that was that was shared with the community, or had different forms and discussions uh, revolving around the art that was created. Mm. So that that piece that you saw um, was uh, directed by Troy Burton, who actually directs the UB Blake Center where we're at now. Right. And so we took monologues um, from some plays that he had done with some actors. Uh, we also took poetry that uh, some uh, other poets, uh, some poets had written, and he organized, he structured it. Had a basic loose structure of what he had, of what we wanted to do, and we just found a different locations that we shot it. Um, what I did was, since it was uh, Trayvon Martin, um, and it's called uh, "You Thought I Was Him." A lot of it dealt with uh, men of African descent being misconceived, uh, being seen as someone else. So when you see the piece, you also see uh, these veves. Um, so you see Ogun uh, veves, and you see uh, Ilegba. So Elegba represents the crossroads. Elegba is also known as a trickster who can be seen sometimes, you know what I'm saying, different alter egos, right. changes. So I use that in the context of, uh, of uh, Trayvon Martin and the complexity of men of African descent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, how we carry that thing. Wherever you go in the African diaspora, men of Af African descent and women have this certain swag about them, this cleverness about them, it's universal, you know? So in that piece, so I wanted that to be the undertone. Um, and then the other thing with film is you're able to, you know, especially our ancestors who have been filmed, you're able to capture their spirit and fuse it with now, the contemporary. So in a certain section of the film, I, uh, I took uh, a piece by Mary Baraka and imposed that over when a young man is in the store and he has a hood on, hoodie on. And, and you had that over John Coltrane's Equinox. Equinox, which is right. Just my, it happened to be my favorite Coltrane yeah. piece, which was just dope right. as, as I don't know what. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's funny how that works. So um, while I was editing the piece, Baraka had made the reference to the Equinox. That's right. Um, with, um, you know, with, in, in um, a section of his poem, mm -hmm. um, he was just like kind of like harmonizing it. That's right. So I said, okay, that makes sense. Let me throw in Coltrane right there. And, and it, it just, worked out. And it just worked out. So before we wrap up, I got to ask you about this Nina Simone piece you shared with me too, because uh, she's one of my favorite artists, and I and I reference her all the time, particularly in an attempt to inspire my daughters, who who at various times, you know, express interest in uh, various uh, you know uh, aspects of the arts. So mm -hmm. I'm saying, well, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a singer, you need to know about her right. and, and and how she approached it. And in the piece you created, I, you know, I, 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 um, as I said with you off camera. You included aspects of her analysis and her thought and her, her reflections on the civil rights struggle that have always endeared her to me, but don't always get talked about when people make reference to Nina Simone, mm -hmm. uh, which was her, her, her expressions of support and solidarity for armed struggle right. and her, her rejection of nonviolence and her desire. She said at one point to, I, you know, at one point, if my husband hadn't stopped me, I'm going down south with guns and we're right. arming everybody and we're just going to war and none of this other stuff. People don't talk about that as they reference her. 
so that's what spoke to me. But obviously, mm. you know, as the as the person behind the, the making of that piece, what was it about Nina, or what is it about Nina, that inspires you, that made you want to create mm. this little tribute film to her? Uh, and I don't mean little to be dismissive, but right. short is yeah. what I'm really right. saying. Uh, um, uh, tribute to her, and and what were you trying to draw out about Nina in that piece? Mm. Well, I know for me as a young artist, um, Nina Simone was like a like a boulder falling on my head, man. Right. When I was when I was exposed to her, um, I mean, just the the beauty of her art. Period. You know what I'm saying? Just as an artist, that's pure artist. You know what I'm saying? But then to couple that, you know what I'm saying? But that sense of resistance, you know what I'm saying? And devotion to change and willing to sacrifice. And then at the time when she, at the point in history when she was when she when she was an artist coming out, the fact that I think one of her first releases was bootleg. She had to deal with that kind of exploitation and still come over that and still devoted her, her time. In that piece, I wanted to deal with like the raw Nina, the human Nina, the vulnerable Nina, and then juxtapose that with the Nina that you described, the Nina that was willing to go down south and pick up arms, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and then in that particular piece, uh, before, I, before I had shot and edited that piece, um, I wasn't aware that Backlash Blues, her song Backlash Blues, was actually an interpretation of Langston Hughes's poem. Right. Right. So then I was lucky enough to find, actually find some footage, footage of Langston speaking, her actually reading the poem, and then I was able to like fuse that into her actually performing it live. And again, the beauty with film, it's able to fuse Nina's uh, recorded performances with choreography by some young women, you know what I'm saying, that we work with in the, uh, in the, uh, in the program. And, um, and when the youth saw that, like, to this day, you know what I'm saying, Nina Simone is just, is, just, is just part of their lingo. Nina Simone is just part, part of their casual knowledge. And, and that's the way it should be, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to the greatest extent as possible, education should be organic, as organic as possible, you right. know what I'm saying? And I feel like film is a medium to help you do that. Well, Bashi Rose, thanks again for stepping out from behind the camera and the editing booth to uh, join us for this segment of I Mix What I Like. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Real quick, how can people follow up with Nomo Theater and Film and other work that you're doing? Where can they, how can they catch up with you? Uh, there's a uh, Nomo Theater Film uh, YouTube channel and I have a, a website, www.nomo.com, -M -M theater.com. Right. Well, thanks again to Bashi Rose, and thank you, thanks to you for watching this segment of I Mix What I Like here at the Real News Network. Peace, everybody.